the little voice in my head. I like to call it the little bitch. Oh, there's that little guy. Nice try today. Cute. Oh, I'm not gonna listen to you, cute little guy. Uh, I'm gonna put you over there in the corner. How often does that voice hold my listeners back? Today, we're gonna be talking about the mindset problems that you have and that little tiny voice that holds you back from everything that you want in this world. And one of the things that I notice with people is that they think because of the fact that I am the, the mindset mentor, the mindset guru, or whatever it is that they wanna call me, that I have no issues with my mindset and nothing can be further from the truth. And I'm gonna be talking about that today. One of the things that you realize is everything that I teach, I'm a guinea pig first. I don't ever teach anything until I know that it works for me. And the reason why this is important is because you have to realize with most people, who are coaches. They're coaches because they really struggled at something. So much they struggled at it that they end up going, I, I have this issue and I need to really, really work at this issue. And they work hard and they work hard and they work hard and they overcome whatever that thing is. Whether it's weight loss, whether it's yoga, or in my case, it's mindset where I had such a bad mindset. I was so negative. I made so many excuses for why my life wasn't where I wanted it to until I identified this problem and said, this is the main thing holding me back in my life. I'm gonna go full force at destroying this thing that's inside of my head so that I can get past it. And so I worked at it for years and years and years and a decade and now 14 years I've been working at it. And now I can go and teach people some of the stuff that it's worked for me. And that's what a coach really does. And that's what I'm teaching to you guys. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that the person who's a fitness coach doesn't also really want a hamburger every once in a while or doesn't want to work out every single day. It doesn't mean the person that's the yoga coach and the meditation coach is this perfect, calm, peaceful joy all of the time. What it all means is that it's something that they have to overcome and they work at it really, really hard. My mindset can be completely in the dump sometimes. But now I have the strategies to pull myself out of feeling that way because I've been working in it for so long, so I don't have to feel that way anymore. And that's what I'm going to talk about, is that I don't ever want to be seen as a guru. I don't ever want to be seen as this perfect person. The thing that I try to have people understand who listen to this podcast is I'm just a normal person that has all of the exact same struggles as you. I've just been working at it for maybe a few years longer than you have, and now I'm gonna teach you some of the strategies that worked for me. One of the best compliments that I ever got from somebody was inside of my Kaizen Mastermind, which is my 12-month program. And he said, the thing I like about you, Rob, is that you're just really ordinary. And most people would listen to that and be like, uh, that's kind of offensive. But for me, I was like, I love that because I don't want to think, have people think, that life is out of my reach. And I talked about this on my, on my Instagram stories um, a few days ago. So if you don't follow my Instagram, follow me on there, like I said earlier when we first started, because I talk about these things on my Instagram stories as well. And I talked about the little voice in my head. And I like to call it the little bitch. For me personally, it's my little bitch. It's the bitch inside of my head that holds me back from everything that I want. I'm talking about the voice inside of your head that is the opposite of what you truly want in your life. It's the voice that holds you back from everything that you've ever wanted. It's the one that stops you from taking the action that you need to. It's the one that's negative, when in reality you wanna be positive. It's the one that judges other people. It's the one that makes up stories and all of these demons that you think could be in your future and talks you into reasons why you should stay inside of your comfort zone. That's the little voice, that's the little inner bitch that I'm talking about. So I'm gonna to talk to you today about something that happened with me today with my inner bitch so that you guys can understand that I go through these things, but then I can also tell you the process that I went through. So let me tell you. So we were in Sedona for the past month and we drove home from Sedona this Saturday and this Sunday. And uh, you know, we had to pack up all of our stuff. We were there for a month. And so we drive my truck out there so we can have my truck and I have a Ford Raptor so we can go off-roading and do all of those things. So I wanted to have my truck out there. So we drive out to Sedona. So then we have to pack up the entire house. We have to clean up the house. We have to get all those things right. So that takes time, especially when I'm still working a full-time job while I'm there. So Thursday, Friday, we're working and packing, getting it together, getting all of our stuff together, saying goodbye to our friends, going on a hike with our friends so we can make sure that we say goodbye to everybody and say goodbye to Sedona. Saturday, nine hours of driving. Sunday, nine hours of driving. Monday, Monday, which was for me yesterday, 
It was just a whole lot of catching up, things that I had to do. And I just wasn't feeling it yesterday, but I had so many things I had to do. I just had to fight through it and just get things done. So then today, I'm not feeling it again today. And I wake up and I'm like, I don't normally not feel it. And I don't, when I don't feel it, I still do what needs to be done, but I don't normally go from one day of not feeling it to another day of not feeling it. I'm like, man, I'm off. I don't know if it's because of the fact I'm coming from Sedona, which is this beautiful, magical place. And now I'm coming here where there's tens of thousands of people and you know, hundreds of thousands of people and it's more dense and the energy might be more dense. Maybe there's more 5G. I don't know what it is. I'm just not feeling it. I feel different. And my inner bitch was really loud today. It was really loud yesterday, but it was really loud again today. And I was like, I'm not going to do this. This is not happening, inner bitch. We're not gonna do this. Now, if this was 10, 15 years ago, that little inner bitch would have just paralyzed me. It would have told me to take today off. It would have told me to go onto Instagram. You don't feel good. Not a great day. Maybe tomorrow, put off all of your goals to another day, procrastinate, whatever it is that it wants to tell me, it would tell me. But today it was telling me, oh, yeah, don't, don't, you don't need to get your work done. You know, it's telling me to take the day off. It was telling me to take a step back. Ah, oh, just chill out today. You know, your, your business will be fine. You'll be fine. Life will be fine. You know, don't record your podcast. Don't do all the things that you need to do. And it was trying to hold me back from taking another step forward in my journey, in my personal development, in my life, in everything that I have. Now, I want to pause right there and I want to ask you guys a question. Do you know what I'm talking about, this inner voice? Do you feel this little inner bitch that comes in as well? Because for me, it's still loud. I've just developed strategies to not listen to it and not pay attention to it anymore. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. So what I did was I took a step back and I looked at it and I tried to take myself out of the jar so I could read the label and see what's actually going on here, right? So then I took a step back and I asked myself, what is my little inner bitch saying? Because usually what it's telling you not to do is what you actually need to do. So if I take a step back, it actually is a really good, it puts a spotlight on what I actually need to do. It's showing me what I need to do. So I was like, what is my little inner bitch telling me? Okay, I can tell what it's saying. My little inner bitch is really, really trying to talk me out of working out today. Oh, do, do you know, work out later, Rob. Don't worry about doing it in the morning like you were supposed to. Oh, you didn't get enough sleep. Um, you didn't get enough, you know, coffee, tea. You don't feel 100% right. You don't want to, you know, throw up and feel bad during your workout. So it was, I could tell it was this little story about why I shouldn't work out. I was like, I got to drop everything now and work out. Because when that little voice pops in and tells me what not to do, I need to do exactly what it's telling me not to do in order to conquer it. Because that's the thing that's holding me back from who I need to be is that little inner voice. I was like, all right, here we go. Rob, time to work out. Now we gotta go work out. So stopped what I was doing, moved some of the furniture inside the living room, got myself ready, found the YouTube that I needed to, got the weights, got everything that I needed to, got all set up. And the whole time I'm setting up, the little inner bitch is like, nah, man, why don't you do yoga instead? You know, do some yoga, take it easy. You know, you drove for two whole days, your joints are probably sore. You guys know what I'm talking about, just all of these excuses and things not to do, and excuses, excuses, excuses. Oh uh, yeah, you know, and, and as I'm getting dressed and changing into my workout clothes, it got louder and louder. Rob, you don't have enough time. Rob, you literally just ate breakfast 15 minutes ago. What if you throw up all over your brand new couch? You know, all of these things came up into my head. Do yoga instead, all of this, and, and it's excuse, excuse, and trying to take me out of the thing that I need to do. And when I, when I can identify that voice and what it's saying, I need to go at what that little inner bitch is saying. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's work out, bro. We're gonna go at it. So we go at it, we start working out. During the workout, the voice is coming through. Uh, you're supposed to be working out for 45 minutes. Man, why don't you just cut it at 20? Like you just did the warm up, you just did a little bit of a workout, your joints are sore, you had a long drive, there's all of these things, you've got stuff you've gotta do today, you've got a Zoom call that you gotta jump on with the people that you're coaching, the people that you're teaching to build businesses with, you've also got a Zoom call that you gotta hop on for this course about how to rewire your brain, you've gotta record a podcast, you've gotta get on the phone with your sales team and help them, and it was just things that I had to do and had to do and had to do, and I was like, I'm not listening. I'm going to do what you don't want me to do. So finish the workout, 
guess what? Felt a hundred times better after the workout. I was like, yes, I am conquering this little inner bitch day by day, day by day by day by day. I'm just doing what it's telling me not to do. So I'm like, all right, cool. Got to do a Zoom in about 40 minutes. I'm going to go take a shower real quick. Hop in the shower. I start thinking about this podcast episode when I'm in the shower. And I'm like, yeah, it's like this little inner bitch. It keeps popping up. And I'm sorry, to think of ideas. And I'm mentally jotting down notes. And I'm like, basically what I did was I identified that the voice was going on. I identified that first. Then I asked myself, what does this little inner bitch not want me to do? And it was work out. And that's what I did. And then I went, hold on. What does the little inner bitch not want me to do right now? And immediately a thought came in, dude, the last thing you want to do right now is take a cold shower. You don't have time for a cold shower. And I was like, this mother is coming in again. He's coming in hot. I don't want this little inner bitch to be popping up inside of my head. I don't want it to be holding me back. Here it is again. It's popping up. All right. That means I got to take a cold shower. Time for a cold shower, Rob. All right, cool. So turn it into a cold shower. I'm doing my breathing exercise. <sighs> Going through the breathing exercise, doing everything that I'm supposed to, and it's popping up again. Okay, that's enough. Okay, that's enough. You've gone long enough. I'm like, that's not enough because I can hear the little voice coming up inside of my head. Uh, it's telling me that I'm needing to, to stop. I'm going to keep going instead. I'm going to keep doing what I need to do. I'm going down. And what I'm doing is I'm breathing and actually like, if you could see me, if you're watching the video of this, if you're listening to the podcast, you can't see it. But if you're watching me on YouTube, you can see it. For those of you guys that listen to the podcast, follow me on YouTube so you can see it. So I'm punching the air. I'm doing my breathing. And I was like, oh, I literally had like an out of body experience. So I'm basically looking at myself and thinking, how ridiculous do I look right now that I'm breathing really intensely. I'm punching the air and I'm having like a miniature fight between myself and myself inside of the shower in freezing cold water. And I was like, this is like a little inner bitch exorcism. Just the same way an exorcism is like pulling a demon out of a human. If you've ever seen the movie, The Exorcist, I'm basically pulling this demon out of my body where I'm like, I will not have you anymore. I'm going to conquer this side of myself. And I was like, I was fighting with myself and fighting with myself and fighting with myself. And eventually I was like, yes, I feel like I've conquered it. I feel like I've gotten past it. So then I get out of the shower and I'm like, okay, I feel good. I feel like I've conquered this thing. And I thought to myself, how often does that voice hold my listeners back? And I want you to think about that. How often does that little inner voice come up for you? And here's the thing, I've been working on myself for 14 years. I've taught thousands of people strategies that I've used over the years, and it still pops up. And I have a lot of friends that are successful people. Guess what? When I talk to them, the voice still pops up. It doesn't ever go away. You just learn how to do what it doesn't want you to do. I've said it before, the difference between a successful person and unsuccessful person is that they both feel the fears. They both have the little inner voice. They both have all of the fear of rejection, the fear of success, the fear of failure, all of those things. They just, the only difference between the two is that a successful person just doesn't listen to the little voice inside of their head. It just doesn't listen. They just don't listen to the fears, to all of the things that it says that they shouldn't do. They think that it's actually them, when in reality, it's a part of them that's trying to hold himself back. The unsuccessful person, this person that's not where they want to be in life, is the person who's sitting there and they're listening to that voice. Same voice. The only difference is that the people that aren't where they want to be are listening to that voice, and the people who are where they want to be are not allowing that voice to hold them back. They're so focused on their life. They're so focused on what they want. They're so focused on the lives that they're going to impact, the world they're going to impact, the money they make, the happiness, the peace, the joy, the family that they're going to build, the places they're going to travel to. They're so focused on that, that that little voice is just like a little gnome to them. They're like, oh, there's that little guy. Cute. Nice try today, but I'm not going to listen to you. Oh, I'm not going to listen to you, cute little guy. Uh, I'm going to put you over there in the corner. An unsuccessful person is like, oh my God, there's the monster. There's the boogeyman again. I need to listen to this boogeyman because clearly it's listening to my safety and I want to make sure that I, I stay away from it. No, the difference is the perception of the voice that you have. The successful person and the unsuccessful person both have that voice. The only difference is the unsuccessful person listens to it and the successful person doesn't listen to it and they actively fight against it. 
It's the exorcism that I'm telling you about. I know the voice is there. It's not going away and it hasn't gotten any quieter in the past 14 years. I'm going to promise you that. I've just developed strategies to not allow myself to listen to it and to fight through and work through it. When I got out of the shower, I was freaking motivated. I did the, I felt proud of myself. I felt accomplished and that gave me momentum into the rest of the day. I crushed today and I did not feel like crushing today, but I did what the voice didn't want me to do. I did the full workout, felt better, did the cold shower, felt better. I wouldn't have had a great day if I would have listened to the voice. So I want to ask you a couple questions. Number one, what is your inner bitch telling you? What is it telling you to do? Because usually what you should do is what it's telling you not to. So first off, what's it telling you? Number two, what is it holding you back from? What is that little inner voice holding you back from? Number three, what does it not want you to do? So number one, what is the inner bitch telling you? Number two, what is it holding you back from? And number three, what does it not want you to do? Because that is the key to your next level. Doing what that little inner voice doesn't want you to do is the key to the next level. You need to listen to it and go, huh, I've identified the little inner voice. I've identified what it doesn't want me to do. And now I need to do what it doesn't want me to do because that's actually the identification of what's going to get me out of the comfort zone. That is the key to unlock the door for the life that you want. That is the key to unlock the door for everything that you've ever wanted. Why? Because the little inner voice is the small reptilian part of your brain that's trying to keep you in a comfort zone to keep you safe. And everything that you want in your life is outside of that comfort zone. So if you listen to the voice and pay attention to what it says, and then you identify what it doesn't want you to do, and you do it anyways, it will automatically pull you outside of your comfort zone. And when you're outside of your comfort zone, you start creating the life that you want to. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Because let's be real, if you don't figure out how to get past the fear in your head that's holding you back from the life that you want, then you're going to have to stay in the place of mediocrity that you're in.